When there is an issue in Kubernetes, we try to figure out what's wrong through observability tools. If we do things right, we should be able to see metrics, logs, traces, and events. And more often than not, that should be enough to figure out what's wrong. Nevertheless, that is not always the case. Sometimes we might need to get our hands dirty by doing what shouldn't be done. Sometimes we might need to enter inside a container of the application that is causing the issue and troubleshoot directly from there. So how do we do that? Now, your first reaction might be to execute something like kubectl exec to enter into the container with the process that is misbehaving. That, however, would not, and I repeat, not work if you're building containers the right way. Your containers should be based on scratch image, which does not have anything except the binary that we are running with sometimes a few dependencies. In this case, there is no shell nor typical binaries we might need, so that will not work. Even if you're not using Scratch as the base image, you should use something like kubearmor to prevent the execution of anything but whatever is required for your application, and that means that shell is not available. By the way, if you're confused about the Scratch image and why I'm using it, please watch this video. Now, before you say that you will never, ever, 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 ever use Scratch or Armor precisely because that would prevent you from debugging your applications, let me give you good news. Since Kubernetes 125, we have ephemeral debug containers, and they're now a preferable way to troubleshoot the issues. From now on, anyone trying to run kubectl as a command should be exiled, sent away. So, how do ephemeral containers work? All we have to do is execute kubectl debug and a new container will be attached to the pod of the application. The target argument is critical since, as the name implies, it allows us to target the namespace of a specific container. And bear in mind that in this context, when I say namespace, I do not mean Kubernetes namespace, I mean namespace as a critical part of containers in a Linux distribution. Now, the fact that this time I could exec into a container shows it is a different one. Remember, the container of my application does not have shell. The important thing to note is not only that we created a new container inside the same pod, but that the new container shares the same namespace as the container with the application. And again, this is not Kubernetes namespace, this is containers namespace. From the user perspective, it's as if we are in the same container, but this time with Alpine, which does have shell, a package manager that we can use to install whatever we need, and so on and so forth. As proof that we are in the same namespace, I will list all the processes with PS. We can see that the application process, silly demo, is indeed there. And the fact that PS works in the first place shows that we are not inside the application container even though it looks that way. Let me exit the container before we move on. Now that I convinced you that ephemeral containers are a much better way to troubleshoot issues instead of executing kubectl exec, I need to apologize for misleading you. Do not do what I just did. Do not run kubectl debug, at least not in a way I just did. First of all, it is often not a good idea to interfere with an application running in production. Actually, that's often not a big deal since you probably wouldn't troubleshoot the issues in production directly instead of using observability metrics unless all other options were exhausted and the issue is critical and urgent. There is, in my opinion, a bigger issue. When we create ephemeral containers, they will continue running forever and ever. There is no way, as far as I know, to remove such containers. And that's very easy to confirm by outputting the definition of the pod we were debugging, or I was debugging. We can see from the ephemeral containers statuses section 
that the ephemeral container is still running. It cannot be removed and the only option we have to get rid of it is to delete the whole pod. That sucks. That makes ephemeral containers not very ephemeral. So does that mean that I just wasted your time by convincing you to use something you should not use? That would make me a bad person and I'm not a bad person. There is an alternative though. We can add share processes and copy to Flex. The outcome seems to be the same. We are inside a container that does not even have shell. Or to be more precise, we are in a different container that shares the same namespace with the container of the application we're debugging, so it looks like we're in it. Just as before, I can list all the processes or do anything else I might need to do when troubleshooting an issue. However, this is not the same pod. We created a copy of the pod and the ephemeral container is running inside that copy. Now we can get rid of the ephemeral container by simply getting rid of the whole pod or to be more precise, the copy of the pod. So let me exit the container and just delete the pod silly demo debug. So here's the summary. Use container images based on Scratch or if that does not work for you based on Alpine or Wolfie combined with Cube Armor that should deny the execution of anything but the process of the application. Do not attempt to enter into containers by executing kubectl exec since that will not work. And even if it does, it's a silly thing to do. Use kubectl debug instead, but make sure to add shared processes and copy to flags so that the ephemeral container is not running forever and ever and to not affect the pods that should be serving users in production. Be safe and secure while still being able to do what needs to be done. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.